Here we are guys, you heard it here first, you heard the music, you heard the scrapes, it's game three! Which to some of you, Deserux, may be a bit confusing, because scrapes is for best of fives, but I have now repurposed it to be the final game of the set. So it's game three, winner goes home, loser goes to the dugout. What are we expecting, Love D? Well, I'm expecting uh, Red Flame to take my advice and go for the Teemo pick, but assuming that's not going to be happening, I expect a more traditional game. Uh, like I said before, the Shen's going to be banned away. Toxic Kitten's understanding. Um, remember, they do uh, change sides. Once again, the loser picking the sides, so we're going to have the Toxic Kittens on the blue side again. But anyway... Uh, they ban away the Shen. They realize, well, with Red Flame's playstyle, we really don't uh, want to have something that safe playing against him, something that can really counter his entire playstyle. And uh, we see that because of the current bans, they kept Zack on the table, and he's going to be going through for the first pick. This is, of course, post-nerf Zack, but it's not nearly as big a nerf as... Uh, anyone really expected it to be well the issue was they didn't nerf what actually makes the zack strong right which is a little bit of damage nerfs and the uh, insane amount of cc he brings to the table yeah i uh i fully expect the zack to be just as bit as powerful as uh, he was in the patch beforehand not really even gonna notice the damage nerfs necessarily uh so we see in return gragas and zaya have been locked in uh Difex really uh, liking the Zaya pick this series. Thinks it's pretty strong. Of course, it, the nerfs, although they did nerf kind of her, uh, how clean her whole animations are, still considered a very strong pick. And she, he's performed in that second game, shown that he definitely has uh, skill when it comes to the champion. And not surprising to see that get locked in. Gragas, of course, considered kind of a counter pick to the Zack. That body slam and that explosive cask do technically disrupt his E mid flight. So, with a really skilled Gragas play, you can essentially stop the Zack before you can even get into the middle of the team. In return, Thresh has been locked in and a Cassidin blind pick, which I is in probably my top five most hated champ select things in the world. I have no idea why you'd pick the Cassidin here, but. Uh, maybe he knows something I don't. He's, he might just be assuming it's another brand blind pick, and uh, or brand counter pick, I suppose, and has just decided to just straight up go for the Cassidy. See that Graves has managed to fill out this roster so far. Looks which, like Torn. Hmm? Which again, why are you picking the Graves? Other than the fact that it works last game. That That's a pretty good reason that I kind of forgot about. Right, I definitely would have preferred the Gragas over the Graves for the jungle. It's looking like they're going to basically be blind picking the Gragas top. I have no idea. It's not like Gragas is necessarily a high priority pick either. They essentially wasted their first pick. Well, Zach no, had already well, been picked away. Gragas is the true flex pick. It can fill every single role minus the AD carry. And right, but it's it's not like they, they got received some information in the next two picks that made them decide to flex pick the Gragas to the top lane instead of the jungle. I fully believe they expected this Gragas to always be going to the top side. It's not like seeing a Thrash and Cassidy pick suddenly tells you, well, wait, maybe we want a Graves in the jungle instead. I mean, this it, could it, very easily still be a Gragas support, which, in my opinion, oh. is dominating onto the Thrash. And so we see that the brand has been banned away, and instead, Haunter's main has now been unlocked. He is, in fact, a Xerath main. Uh, maybe they have decided to uh, try and counterpick it. They believe that the Cassidy mid is the answer to this Xerath. He's not exactly the strongest counterpick in the world, but against Xerath, it's not the worst laning phase, and... Kassadin can kind of survive it. He might even be able to win it if he decides to go with the Korean-style Kassadin, which we have seen spread to other regions, the Deathfire touch with the constant Q poke, uh, going more heavily into damage early on, typically going for the Blasting one first in the Rod of Ages. Just in general, it's uh, considered very strong because it's it's just a surprising amount of poke damage over time. You know what uh, I want to see? I want to see this huh? Gunblade Kassadin. Because I think it'll work. It's played on LeBlanc. 
I don't see why it couldn't work on the Kassadin. I mean, just how often are you going to be able to get autos off as Kassadin? What? Uh, the Mundo was a, was a, um, a place. Oh, of the okay. I was very confused for a second because as much of a monkey as Red Flame was playing last game, uh, that was, was pretty bad. Again, my bad. I, I didn't think it uh, put him on Mundo duty quite yet. Uh, but, you know. It's just, I, I'm really interested to see what this placeholder pick winds up being instead. Vroom vroom, motorcycle. Yep. But, no, I mean, the problem now with, the problem with doing placeholder picks now that we are currently doing, um... 10 band system is it takes so long right holy moly it takes forever especially when teams don't just straight up like ban what they know they already banned it can take absolutely forever so we could <sighs> doing mundo was the only placeholder that we are aware of we do have the cassidy versus the Zerith matchup my goodness All right. Yeah, we see question marks in the chat, so I don't, I don't know what's going on now. They're restarting it because they banned the wrong thing. Um, it, it does matter. So I know that they, it, it does matter to the admins. We talked about it before the season started. Um, when you do have that placeholder picks, what a lot of teams were doing was just then like banning like Aatrox, Ari, whatever to get through the, the ban phase, which stats wise made it hard for our stats people to um, correctly input, you know, ban rates and stuff like that, because then you have to like go to the right. VOD and see what happened. And if the VOD's not there anymore, then you simply can't see. Because the one that's recorded at the end of the game is whatever was banned through the um, through the actual completed game. So if you do end up banning the wrong thing, then it, it makes it difficult for really people. Right. All right. Well, hopefully we can get into this game soon. As soon as these people figure out what they actually banned. Just go back in the vault, right? All right, <laughs> but I don't believe this is. Did they ban Galio first? Maybe they did. I, I I don't remember. It was so long ago for me. I just simply Ugh. don't. It remember. was literally hours ago, and uh, honestly, know. you know, hours ago. It's definitely a it while was, ago. It was definitely quite a while ago. In fact, days, perhaps months, or even years. Yeah, I'm speaking in dog terms, of course. Oh! But, Led Nagragas. I like Interesting. it. Interesting. Um, some very specific matchup stuff uh, for the Kled into Gragas. Kled, of course, uh, has his very peculiar kit with both Skarl and Kled having separate health bars. And the reason that is so important, specifically in the Gragas matchup and a few others, but, um, when the explosive cask is trying to throw back the Kled but deals enough damage to knock him off Skarl, he's not blown back into the team. He just kind of sits there and Skarl gets, uh, gets to hop off and run away and the uh, Kled just sits where he currently was the moment before. And it makes that matchup very uh, frustrating at times, especially early on in the game. That level 1 ultimate... When Kled is still level 6, level 7, trying to set up ganks is a nightmare because not only is he very hard to kill to begin with, but when he drops the Skarl, all CC that he had originally is gone as well. Suppressions, stuns, knockbacks, all that stuff immediately gets cancelled as Kled retains control of his character. And in this specific matchup, of course, though, Gragas does have a lot of damage with his W on such a beefy target with HP. Uh... At the same time, that, that that could be issues as well, trying to body slam or explosive cast Kled as he loses Skarl in the meantime. 
just a minor thing that can uh, affect the overall lane early on, maybe going into the mid game. And then in the bot lane as well, we see some new supports coming in. We see the Thresh once again, reminiscent of game one, but we see Morgana now. And this is essentially a skill matchup. Uh, Thresh versus Morgana. It, some would argue it is Morgana favored because it's up to her to mess up to begin with. But at the same time, there's a lot of different minute mechanics that you can take advantage of as both supports. Thresh's like to put... It, it's, it's honestly, it's become the... Uh, the mind game meta among higher level supports because originally what happened was uh, as we know Thresh has been around for many years uh, when he levels his flay his empower his autos become empowered where after a certain amount of time he manages to uh, deal a lot more magic damage with his auto attack empowering them and that fully empowered auto attack it deals enough magic damage to completely destroy a level 1 black shield. And so Thresh players discovered this this kind of small tech. And they realized, wait, just auto first and then you can flay them backwards or hook them or whatever it is you wanted to do. So all you have to do is auto them first. So Morganas to counteract this have put two points into black shield before they begin to max their snare. And so for Thresh's to counteract this, they put two points into their E before they start to max their Q. And this has continued on and on. So, this may be something I'm, I'm making a big deal of for nothing, but it's very possible that the Thresh and Morgana are going to be maxing their E's first, just trying to figure out just how many points the other person put into their E. And, uh, not something too important, but it can definitely change, it can definitely change the overall bot lane when ganks are coming in. Holy moly. Hey, when you have three minutes of spectator delay, you gotta fill it with something. That was like a crepo level tangent in the support role. That went on forever. <laughs> yeah, but I, uh... it is nice to hear, and you know the Morgana point does come up pretty huge. Um, my only issue is that she could max it and. There's so much magic damage here, I'm not sure it's gonna matter. Right, this is just a specific thing for the 2v2 and setting up ganks, where if the Thresh wants to prep the gank beforehand, make sure all the CC goes through, he usually goes for the Empowered Auto, and it'll go back and forth for a little while. Um, some other things to talk about, of course, is the Summoner spells in the mid lane. Uh, we already know that's kind of been a talking point in the previous two games. We have TP for Cassidy, which has been considered pretty standard. Helps him survive early games, helps him stay mobile around the map even before 6, in case he needs to help out his team during ganks. Um, and in return, we see Xerath. Is that an exhaust, I see? I think it's Barrier. Barrier, okay. We'll find out so for Zareth real in 50 seconds, but I, I believe it's Barrier. Xerath with the barrier, I don't really like here because the chance of Cassidy actually having Ignite is so small. There's not a real reason to take the barrier over the heal instead. There's not exactly a lot of burst damage either. Of course, there's the full combo from Cassidy, but other than that, I mean, just how much burst damage do you expect to be taking? It's not like he's playing against something like a Lux or a Syndra or something else, something that will literally burst him 100 to 0 if he gets hit with everything. Kastadin's a little bit scrappier. He has some burst to his kit, but overall his full combo shouldn't 100 to 0 you. And the barrier, it's it's an alright choice, but at the same time, it means that he's definitely going to have to be a little bit quicker on his feet without getting any of the movement speed a Ghost or Heal might be able to provide for him. Yeah. But he's also dealing with an, one of the matchups that is going to be interesting. Which, actually, one thing we didn't touch on about that mid lane is Cassidy has an interrupt on his Q. So, say they both go towards the bottom lane to try and, you know, gank. Or, like, say that because Zareth has the wave push advantage, he gets there, he has to go down quicker. If Cassidy can find him after he's popped his ultimate, he can just Q him and cancel it out. And beyond that as well, Cassidy's or uh, uh, Zareth's Q is also a channel. There's half of Zareth's kit is literally uh, channels that can be stopped by Cassidy's Q, which is up on such a qu short cooldown that uh, I honestly like 
the idea if they did their homework assuming they did they knew that when the brand is banned away and the Xerath is not uh, Haunter is going to be very comfortable picking that Xerath in almost every matchup and they prepped the cast in beforehand and if they managed to mind game this correctly not only did they get the counter pick they wanted in the mid lane anyway they also saved up a future slot on their team to allow another team member to get a counter pick as well very smartly played champion select if i'm giving enough credit <laughs> to uh to toxic kittens it's gonna be interesting i'm excited i think i'm excited too i i want to see just how many skill shots honor can hit because that's going to be of the utmost importance this isn't exactly a traditional composition it's it is not a fun really one, this yeah, it's so not really, it's, it's a little bit of everything. It's not really a poke comp, per se. I mean, the Morgana Snares do complement the Xerath nicely. Uh, the team fighting is definitely decent. I mean, whenever you have Graves and Gragas on the team, team fighting is always going to be a possibility. But in general, they it's just, it doesn't really have a specific team composition identity. So it's a little bit of everything. So if this Xerath manages to land a lot of his skill shots, get a lot of poke before fights, it opens up a lot of possibilities, Ooh. and we might be having a level one fight. Ooh. The mono, what are you doing? You're not with the rest of the team. Oh, this could end so badly. Oh no. Get the Samano. The oh, binding connects, no. the damage connects, the body bump connects. The volley does not, the bear trap on a rope goes in. Maggie Chu is forced to flash away. And what a madhouse. Oh, the binding no. connects, but it lands onto Red Flame. Body bump. Flash. Somebody counter flash. Uh. The, the strangest calls. Just in general. I mean, they did wind up coming out ahead. They burned three flashes for two. But, but no kills. Come on. Yeah, no kills over what should have been. I, I'm surprised they didn't manage to layer the CC correctly to get that level one. I mean, that was literally just a result of Xerath not devoting his first point into E instead of Q. I mean, you're playing against a, a, a Cassidy in any way. You don't really need to control the lane like that. You don't need to get that level one push. And look, he takes Q anyway, and this is the first two CS. I'm not quite sure what he expected there. Ooh. It, is, it was a pretty close one. I mean, both both Red Flame and Samana made it out with very little amounts of HP. So, I mean, it, it was so bare knuckle close that, yes, taking the E on the Xerath would have secured it. Interestingly it, enough, I just saw 10 gold go down for the uh, Gragas. When he hit, yeah, he's getting 10 gold. He actually has the gold generation mastery. He figured he'd uh, be in a losing matchup and he's getting whatever gold he can get. I I, I like it. It's different, but um, in this specific actually, instance, it makes sense. I had Anasis in my solo key games the other day take coin level one. And I, I thought I was over. I thought it was GG. Oh, uh, we got a little bit of trading. Scarlet? Popped and the body slam is available. Now it's available. Jungle main could have actually gone in there, and I think he would have won. Um, but back to my point, um, I had a Nasus build coin, and we tried to ask him why, right? Because you want to know why. Right. And he's like, "Well, it gives five percent cooldown reduction <laughs> at level one." Oh. I'm, and I'm well, think, I mean, I'm that's actually about not it. the worst idea in the world. If you've literally fully devoted to, to stacking, yeah. as many NASA's players do, I mean, eh, And I think it's the more I thought about it, I'm like, that's genius. That is so genius. Uh-oh, we got a gank in the mid lane. 3-6 Cassidy. in. Cassidy fun. not level 6. Holding he needs to hide behind the minions. He's now. hiding behind him. Flashes into the end of the line, though. But Tim's not going to flash afterwards. So he, he stays alive for now. Yeah, that, that Nasus actually reminded me back when um, Heart of Gold and Phyla Stone were things. Right. Um, oh, no mana left on the Gragas. This is bad. He yeah. might have to flash. There's the... Ah, yep. flash. Don't flash. Please don't flash. Please don't. He's got... No. Yep. No. Oh, 
I said don't flash! Funny flash. enough, if he had not traded with the Kled until he lost Skarl, he would have been fine flashing, but because he took out Skarl and then flashed, the, the range was up for Kled's shotgun, and he managed to secure the kill off of a misplay that you really don't think of as a misplay at the time. Can he get in on this, though? I think he Oh, no, that's... Skarl's gonna be up very soon. Oh, no, that's not a good idea. Oh, he's gonna be losing so much HP for a bad trade. Oh... Eh, these things happen. Right, but he just used the TP, and... He came to lane with another four or five pots, and I'm really getting tired of seeing this every game. That is a lot of gold wasted over what should just be better trading instead. I mean, even at this point, if you're buying that many potions, it, it's to a point where you should just buy a refillable. Right, you know, it's... It's 500 it's, gold for a corrupting potion total, and he just spent 200 gold in potions on that back well, the, there. The thing is, the refillable potion becomes cost-effective the first time you back and refill it. It's insanely cost-effective. If you realize you're going to be losing trades a lot, then you either get smarter at trades, or buy a refillable, or do both. I mean, you're, you're wasting just so much gold that could be better used elsewhere. And uh, especially when you're playing something like Raga, something with innate sustained, you really have to get used to that different trading pattern. Just using your health as a resource more wisely. Really just play Control Warrior in Hearthstone for a, a while. And then remember you can't afford it because the game's too expensive. Oh, but this is a nice game setup. two-man play. The Zack is uh, not going to land his jump in, but he does get the stretching strikes. Charge oh my coming goodness. in. Who's it going to land up? It lands on Maggie too. The flay comes in. Samano gets the kill. Can they keep it going? Dithex is rooted. Dithex goes down. And because the minions are there, they are all going to survive. I like that play a lot. A little bit of a misplay. Zach deciding to try and queue the two champions together. And that actually brought them a little bit closer to safety. But overall, it was a very nice play. Uh, oh, oh, they might be overcommitting for this, and though. He oh, takes a two-man play once again. Tim gets the kill. Tim gets the double kill. Can he get more? Triple uh, kill coming in for not Tim. But no, there's oh the Oh, my God. Kill. He's going to clean this all T up. Tim should Still get got a quad. He's got them all. Yeah, he's got a quad. <laughs> that was an <laughs> overcommitment of the highest order. And they keep the tower alive. Oh, man. Okay. So what was originally a very good play became a very bad play right away. Oh Holy man, they boy. give up first tower and just gave a Graves four kills. I think I have the teams on the right side. Samato's on Toxic Toxic Kittens, right? Yeah. No. No? It's the other way around. You, you, toxic Kittens are supposed to be on blue side this game. God, I hate teams. You're right. Alright. All right, um, so getting back into the game, I could try to analyze that, but in reality, the reason that just happened is because of greed. Lots of greed. Well, in all honesty, having four members, it, you know, you land the hook onto the Zerath should be a pretty simple kill when you have four members. I mean, yeah, you didn't have the Zack passive, but, you know, you can still make it work. But here comes Ooh, the Ooh, nice play. Don't even need the Zack passive. Punched him in the back of the head. Right, but that's the problem, though, is that they were not healthy members. They definitely didn't have the Skarl tank it up first. Just in general, just the way they juggled the aggro, it was possibly one of the worst possible combinations they could have had juggle aggro. The Zac is only level 4 at that time. He has no passive left. Just, just greed. So much Tim's greed. A level, oh, Tim's a level on, ahead. He can, he can win this. Tim can win. Yeah, he definitely could have won, especially since he had enough mana for his true grid as well, and uh, gives him a little bit of extra armor, not any more MR, but the armor would definitely help, and so he Tim's... definitely could have won that if they had full con committed. And Tim's now backing with 2,400 gold. So now... Interesting. I know he wanted to go in there, but it's it's rough, because once you like, take that first engage, you kind of have to back off. 
bottom tower is going to be going down. All the gold going over to Samano as well. That's pretty huge. Right, and now we see that they've got about a 900 gold lead because of it. The kills are equalized. Oh, that's a little bit of a commitment. Not quite sure what they were expecting there. Yeah, Body Slam goes in. Pretty good. Here comes the Tron. No flash on the Morgana yet. They don't Here get the, the Stretching gang, Strikes. Though. They do get the Let's Bounce kill coming in, but they're oh, all this is still a so low. Enchanted Crystal Arrow. Doesn't matter. Somebody should still, still got the flash. die. And oh, what? Collateral damage keeps them alive, basically. Oh, oh the Storm Raider Strike. That's why it's so good. Haunter with the kill secure. Yeah, that Storm Raider Surge manages to give him the kill, but that was a little bit of a weird sequence there. Tried to see if his ulti would be enough to clean it up, or maybe uh, maybe a little bit of shot calling miscommunication. They thought the Xerath was closer for the ultimate setup. In general, though, Tim is very much popping off. What was originally a good play turned into a counter gank that gave Tim a little bit more gold he's definitely going to be vastly ahead of the rest of the map and this is kind of a repeat of game game two where we saw that Tim had a huge experience lead you can see the CS right now he's keeping up with the solo laners he's got a ton of gold already has his jungle item completed he's gone for the red smite I don't like this neither team has gone for the smite stone uh... Alrighty. That was a little bit of an... Oh, oh wait, that's a kill. No, it's not the wait. flash! What? Holy uh, moly. Alright, I don't... I mean, this is just maybe some mechanical misplays, things that definitely shouldn't be happening. But uh, in the end, they still wind up getting pressure on the tower. Here comes the, the charge. charge the and TP the too. TP. Zack is still quite a ways away. Black Shield coming in clutch. The engage is still happening, however. Flat or damage goes down, signaling the end. So they do manage to save the tower because of it. Uh-oh. Bit of fighting be, back and be, forth. Should be tanky enough. Yeah, Jungle Man's gonna survive. Though. So despite the nerfs to Doran's ring, I don't know if Gragas is fully aware. But they did, in fact, nerf Doran's ring this patch as well. As far as uh, I know, it's still standard, just because of what else it brings. Hunter, though, steps too far forward. Bear Trap on a rope does connect. The damage is there on both sides. Tim gets a sixth kill? Sixth kill. And now it's Maggie Chu versus Z Leone. But Z Leone does not want to keep diving. Uh, maybe he does. Alrighty. Picks that Just up. some over-aggression and... Some late rotations coming in from Torn. Now we see Zaya is going to be coming up. She didn't even manage to push up the bottom lane while she was down there. It was essentially a lot of wasted time, and uh, they wind up losing that trade because they lose the top tower as well. This triple Doran's ring and Doran's shield is really not working out. That's 1,800 gold in Doran's. When this guy is not busy spending all his money on potions, he's buying Doran's instead, and he's just wasting so much gold on useless the stats and very temporary on, stuff. I think your math on rings is wrong. 400? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. They're not 450. They're 400. So 600... He's, he's still spent 1650. Yeah. 1200. And that's... It's 400 apiece. Yeah, 1650 altogether on Dorans. Oh, you're including the shield. Okay. Yeah, just, I wasn't counting the shield. Yeah, four, four Dorans in general? Just... Come on, man. That's... So much. Uh, did they try to steal the dragon with an enchanted crystal arrow? It's happened before. I thought it was gonna happen. Pretty good black shield coming in there. However, had he gone in with the flay, the flay would not have been blocked. So now, what's the play with Rift Herald? His mid lane still up. Zack goes in, gets the knockup, and that's a lot of damage. There's no enchanted crystal arrow. Charge comes in. Black shield barely enough. Red flame gonna get the kill. Dance of arrows goes out. Huge blade calling coming in. That stuns up three. Two more go down. Zack is gonna get smited. Uh, he didn't get smited. But On that note, you're going to have to go full Doa and solo cast for about two sec two minutes, I'm sorry. No 
Alright, easy peasy lemon squeezy with two members down on each side. This mid lane tower should go down pretty easily for the Torn. One more. There it is. Blue turret destroyed. Kled's gonna TP down to the bottom lane with that Eye of the Herald. I don't think he's gonna use it. That was weird. Um, but so now we see blue buff going over to the Zerath. Kled doesn't know they're there, but Kled doesn't shouldn't really care. Um, he's gonna be able to push that out. I don't think they're going to use the Herald, though. I think the Herald they want to use on the mid lane. At least they should want to use it on the mid lane to clear that up and get the rotations down for there. But they also might want to get a pick first. Because last Rift Herald, nothing came up, came of it. Ooh, Maggie almost didn't check that bush, which almost meant that ward would have gone unnoticed. We do get the ward. Ping's going down. There's a red ward in that bush that they didn't see. Samano now. Oh, big hook there. No black shield gets popped. Now it gets popped, but it's not enough. Kill comes in there. Red Flame finds himself a Tim in the jungle. Enchanted Crystal Arrow is going to land. Shutdown coming in. Charge lands on a Dithex. Dithex forced to flash away. There's no bear trap on a rope, so they are able to just walk it out. But here comes the Rift Herald. There's two members down, and everybody's so far away. Dithex oh, there's not going to be anyone one. to save this tower. No, yeah, Dithex was the only one even remotely close. They could push for two. Tim is still down. Looks like they're not going to fully commit for the next tower, but they've already got another push coming to the mid lane. More global gold for them. That's now going to make this four towers to one. Blue smite coming in there. Black shield <laughs> doing its duty. Now, I had a question. Totally forgot. I had words in my brain that were supposed to be transported to my mouth. And they got hijacked halfway down, and now I simply can't remember. Uh, was the question perhaps why does Ragus still have four Dorans in his inventory? I don't know. No, I didn't even notice that. I've kind of just kind of let the top lane do the top lane. Um, Yeah, my Perhaps brain. the question is, uh, how is it that the Toxic Kittens have found themselves in the lead despite giving up a quadra kill six minutes into the game to a Graves? That is a pretty good one. That, well, that, I can answer a... that pretty quickly. Uh, Graves hasn't exactly done much to push that lead even further. We know that the Kled has been pushing up constantly, as Red Flame likes to do. Uh, the times he's not split pushing, Torn should know. That means he's setting up for a charge. He's away somewhere with no vision. His his pattern on the Kled has been very linear. He's either split pushing, putting in pressure, or he's waiting in the back side of the map, just waiting to go for a charge. And uh, they haven't taken advantage of that yet. Even though the Grogus has a lot of disruption tools to catch up the Kled, or at least make him burn his charge. Like here I said before, comes. here he is again. He is gonna connect onto Tim. You can't flash away from that, my friend. Enchanted Crystal Arrow goes in as well, but a well-timed teleport will scare them away. Funny enough, if anything had landed together, that would have been a perfect catch and potentially a push in the mid lane. Instead, all it accomplished was burning the collateral damage and the flash from the graves instead. If that flay had landed, if they had exhausted him, or maybe flash flayed him, if they had flashed forward and ulted him with the Zac, anything differently, or even thrown the Enchanted Crystal Arrow sooner, they would have gotten the catch and potentially a push. Uh, I might have spoken too soon, though. Comes the dive in doesn't get either of them. It's pretty rooted up, but there's two members on towers. You see Cassidy, you see the um, Kled both on tower duty right now. 
They're stopping these backs pretty effectively too. Yeah, they need they need to figure out what they need to do now. I mean, I don't even know if Zareth's enough to stop Cassidy from pushing with just how many minions he has available to him. There is no Lich Bane just yet, so it's not too yeah, big. Yeah, that's the tower going down. Oh, oh god, and he missed the stun too. Oh, yeah, so this is gonna be both sums. Just missed all his buttons, forced to flash away. Zion Leon could have kept going. Here comes the ultimate. I love how the directed camera doesn't show us where he's shooting. Yeah. Let me just stare at this. Oh, and then he dies. Zara. All right, and it can't decide where to go. So he does go down. The inhibitor is in danger. Maggie Chu, though, would like to say hello. That's the bind. That's uh, not That's enough damage. Kill. Oh, but that is. Lateral damage does help. Chain onto the jungle main. Can they get away? The answer is only with the tower. A lot of mechanical misplayers, mi misplays have been coming from these players this game. It, this may be a sign of the fatigue, not used to just playing back to back like this, three team games in a row. Uh, but you can definitely see it's starting to show now. Some end characteristic mistakes and some minor misplays contributing to uh, this gold lead really starting to balloon now, almost 6,000. And with this Drake coming in, that's another objective that the Toxic Kittens have been able to get away with no return so that is a earth drake a piece towers stand no chance this game might be contributing the blue buff to the ash instead of the thresh or the zac i do like that uh not only is she going to of course have her volley up for a little bit more poke and some soft cc setup but she's going to have that enchanted crystal arrow up more often. It's already up right now, so the next one she decides to cast will have that 10% CDR applied to it. I do definitely like it. Yeah, you also get the mana regen, which means you can just absolutely spam your focus. Which is nice in team fights because right. it's just attack speed, attack speed, attack speed, attack speed. Uh, especially and now that we have that first zeal item being completed. Talking about the ranger's focus on top of that. It makes the instant CD 10% more instant on the Ash Cube. That's pretty good. That's like a lot of instant CD. I don't, I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's zero divided by 10% is Yeah, but negative 10% CDR sounds pretty good on ability. Actually, it sounds terrible. Because if you have negative CDR, that means your stuff takes longer. And Jungle Man, I don't think you thought that one through. There's a bear trap on yeah, your ass, and now you're the in the grass. He's really regretting using that body slam now. Yeah, but you talked over my catchy line, so now when someone clips it, Deserux, it's not going to sound right. as good. Beat it. Nobody heard you. Go. <laughs> uh, I don't think it works that way either. But things are things are actually pretty close. Uh, kind of. I mean, it, it's a 6k gold lead. Now, once again, trap, meet, ass, but now can they defend the inhibitor? I don't think this is the long-term solution here. Zaleon is going to get caught, but he's also going to get caught. Ooh. End of the line can max, and so does the collateral damage. Oh, they're going for the three-man Baron in the meantime. He can Did just charge right out of there. I don't know what they're Flash, expecting to body happen. body slam. Barrel's oh going to keep Red Flame alive. You really oh. have to... The problem with the barrel is it's del it has a time now, like a, a cast time. Right. Which makes it a lot more balanced, but you have to throw it farther than ever when you think about it. I'm, I'm honestly a little confused at what the planning was. Now with four people in the mid lane and just the Grogus with no flash or explosive cast, they literally just gave up an inhib along with the Baron. I don't understand. Free inhibitor goes down. Now this opens up Red Flame to move around the map even more, because now he doesn't have to tunnel vision onto that open inhib. He can make his way back top, take that final tier one, or even pseudo. Well, actually, yeah, that, that'd be the best decision with TP and charge available. At the same time, he could just continue to push down the bottom lane anyway, with that Hydra available to him and Super Minions at his back, buffed up Super Minions. He'll be able to literally end the game by himself if that happens again, where there's just no real response to his play. And he's actually pretty close to a Bloodthirster, too, which is just nasty. My goodness. Crazy. That's pretty gross sounding. 
I don't know if I fully agree with it. I love the death dance uh, mechanic along with Kled's double health bars. And uh, something that's not really talked about very much, especially since now that Death Sense has become a staple item. Is, oh, Ooh, we have an engagement going on. Pick on to Samano. Flash comes in to send him to safety, however. Root lands on to Shockwave here. Comes the Zed and the charge. I meant Zack, but Jungle Mane is able to keep his carry alive for now. Jet the Crystal Arrow goes out. Red Flame goes in. Tim's doing what he can, which is dying. But he does train one for one with the help of his jungler. The interrupt coming in. The die effects Ooh. die combo comes in. Jungle main is trying to do what he can. There goes the Scarl. What more can they do? Red Flame not really in a position to get Scarl back. But there goes the jump in. Hunter pops the barrier. He lets Bounce bring his jungle main into the team. There's the Scarl. There's the charge. Bear Trap isn't going to land, but it is a double kill and an ace for Red Flame to seal the game. That was very chaotic team fighting, but overall very well played by the Toxic Kittens. They managed to pick their targets, keep each other alive. Uh, Kassin had managed to draw a huge amount of pressure. Whether or not he meant to, I'm not quite sure, but he completely... Uh, shifted Graves' attention from the majority of the fight, had him chase around the Cassidy for uh, what was essentially way too long of a, of a period of time, and I mean, he ended wound up dying up, too. Yeah, he wound up being one for one as well. That's what happens when you decide to go for this split building that he's been going for. He went for the Blade of the Ruin King, which, yeah, that's great in theory. It helps you deal with shredding the Zack and the Kled with all that HP stacking, I mean, but at the same time, it's pretty meta. Typically, we're seeing that now that we have the Storm Raider Surge Graves. Uh, pretty much all of them are building that. Excuse me, Blade of the Ruin King. But it's definitely a kiting item. Dashing forward into a casted in melee range to try and one for one them. That's what the duelist items are for. Things like Black Cleaver, where the longer the fight those goes on, the more damage you deal. Uh, getting the Maw, where you get uh, the, the passive after a certain amount of time and you get the increased lifesteal and spell vamp during that time. With neither of those items completed, he wound up getting one for one just because he uh, felt a little bit stronger than he actually was. Very strange considering he has 10 kills on top of it. Yeah, and he's gonna be finishing up that flat cleaver any second now. I forget the exact combined cost. I wanna say it's like 950. 950, yes. Yeah. So he, he had 980, which means he does complete that. That is, like you were saying, the longer fight item. But there's not a lot left to fight for. I can, yeah, I, I'm expecting a very slow, calculated push for both the mid and the bot wave. The TP is up for the Kled. Uh, he can go up and start slow pushing that as well, forcing them to spread their forces thin. He might just be walking through the front door though. It is Red Flame. And it seems like he's been going for the full lifesteal build. He's building yet another Vamp Scepter, and I'm assuming that's for the Death Dance this time. And to talk about what I wasn't wanting to talk about before, Death Dance, and why I love this item. What people don't realize when they read the 30% bleed, what that should really be read as is if you're good, this item gives you 30% damage reduction, is what it essentially becomes. Because if you manage to keep yourself in a position to constantly... Oh, oh the just gonna slow catch up there. into the knockup perfectly comboed. He tries oh, to make him huge. kiss, gets Maggie in the let's bounce. There's the Zonius to keep Zyleon alive. Stunned is Tim's name for now. Dyfex eats the volley on the back end. Maggie eats the trap, gets tagged in. There are so many displacements in this fight, but it doesn't matter. Full 5 for 0 ace. That is the game. That is the Toxic Kittens going 2 and 1 for the night. There's the surrender. They don't even get to kill the Nexus. And with some fantastic split pushing, managing the waves, spreading forces thin, and then forcing engages through all the different methods they have available to them, utilizing Kledge Charge and Zack's Elastic Slingshot, they managed to take this series 2-1, to one, really showing that they know how to perform these 5v5 team fights correctly. Which is weird because, you know, I mean, yeah, not just, not just the build. The build was the old school Trendamere build, basically. But so now, you know, we saw game one 
game one was weird because you know, um you know there was the connection issues tim couldn't connect on the elise and it just didn't really work out but then they reverse sweep it they go 2-0 pretty much commanding fashion no wait that's wrong because tim lost my bad Never mind. Huh. Completely ignore the entire point I was trying to make there. Never mind. He, he still put up a hell of a three games, a three game series. He disconnected in the first one. Not much he can do there. But the next two games, he definitely had great games on Graves. Uh, it's a shame he didn't manage to translate that into more of a lead for his team overall. But uh, I mean, he still had the most damage for his team that game. So, I mean, it wasn't like he was completely useless. It was just that there wasn't seemingly enough backup. And it got to a point where just nobody was dealing with Kled. Like, it got to a point where you can't deal with Kled. Yeah, it, overall, I, I do think it was a much higher quality series than we might have expected after the end of the first game. I, I would have liked to see a little bit cleaner macro. For both teams, but overall, they performed when it mattered in those 5v5 team fights. Really, in these lower leagues, that's what it really comes down to the most, is which team can perform and use their abilities uh, correctly the most amount of times in these 5v5s. And in the end, the Toxic Kittens emerge victorious. Yeah, and it is only the first week of Elder League. Um, we do have many more weeks because we did transition from a shorter schedule with best of twos to a longer schedule with now best of threes so there's still plenty of time for these teams to improve upon what they saw today and you know smooth some of the things out yeah i'm looking forward to seeing how both these teams develop over the season yeah congrats to both teams ggs to both teams but with that guys that is all we have for you tonight um Definitely make sure to tune in tomorrow at 4 p.m. EST, I believe. Yep, 1 p.m. PST. Yep. Yeah, yeah. so tune in 1 p.m. PST, 4 p.m. EST for our Phoenix League games. You will see me back again, but I forget who I'm casting with. I'm just forgetting everything. I tonight. am pretty sure we're casting again tomorrow together. Probably. Yes, we are. All right, so you will see both of us again tomorrow. 4 EST, 1 PST. But as always, guys, if you want to get involved here at Ascension Esports, hit us up on Twitter, hit us up on Reddit, hit us up on the Discord. We have we have in-house games every day. We have the three leagues that we've been showcasing here this weekend with the uh, Dragon League Fridays, Elder League Saturdays, and Phoenix League on Saturdays. Now, for that, it is all we have for you today. I'm the Doctor, being joined by Love D. Am I supposed to say goodnight? Kinda. Good night. <laughs> and we'll catch you guys next time. Thank you and goodbye.